large language model based on gsip the compression algorithm i mean as funny as it sounds it has got some juice in it it's not like complete fantasy so there is there is recently this gzip related memes online that all started from this paper which got published in december 2022 the paper name is less is more parameter free text classification with gzip what caught the eyes of a lot of people is that the metrics that they got with gzip they in fact it it did better than bert and uh, it did better than bert in certain cases and that's not something that people often discuss but it's an uh, out of distribution data set ood data set and also somebody pointed out that that is not english so anyways jzip with a combination of knn k nearest neighborhood did better in for a text classification task so this created a, like a huge fire or outburst of new ideas new thoughts new memes as usual with internet so i wanted to make this video in exploring this idea and why it is not completely a ridiculous or crazy idea and to do that i recently came across another open source project that actually calls itself zip lm it's a it's a it's a single file i mean you can see the entire entire file here it's a single file with a class in it that's called zip model and what a zip lm is doing is um, the author also mentioned that the paper is the inspiration for that what a zip lm ultimately is doing that is it's using gzip the algorithm the compression algorithm and then it is trying to build a large language model where if you input a prompt it will generate an output text i've got the google collab notebook where you can input a prompt let's say this is your prompt and it outputs a bunch of text that's what it does so now the main catch here is that what is happening under the hood for that let's go back to gzip as an algorithm i don't know how many of you are old enough to understand that these compression algorithms exist but back in the day when you had to use floppy disks when you had to use cd drives a lot of times you had to compress things i mean this was this was a thing like a lot of times you had to compress and upload it on internet you always didn't have this much disk space and you always didn't have websites that accepted any size file so you always had to do some kind of compression and whenever i speak about compression i do not know why i cannot help myself but think about pied piper from the series silicon valley keeping that aside what gzip ultimately is doing is gzip is a very popular algorithm and gzip is trying to do something called compression a file compression and decompression so gzip works like finding the repeated patterns or redundant information and then it tries to encode them or a, it tries to replace these patterns with some kind of shorter code so that way it creates a more compact version or representation of the file in itself and when you want to unzip it again it kind of you know it's like deco decoding or decompression it uh, tries to ex expand it and then gi gives you the data this is what gzip in a very simple english now what people have started thinking not now almost 20 years back quite back people have always tried to compare compression with intelligence so this idea is not entirely new it's not like 2023 people figured out that hey we can use compression algorithm for uh, let's say as a proxy for intelligence so this is a very popular competition it's called uh, widely known as hutter prize so there is a prize money for compressing human knowledge this is the total payout that has been given and the current record is compress a 1 gb gb gigabyte file to less than the current record of 115 megabytes and what is this you can get into the details and then understand but the idea here is that being able to compress well is closely related to intelligence as explained below while intelligence is a slippery concept file sizes are hard numbers the intention of this prize is to encourage development of intelligent compressors programmers as a path to agi this is quite an old contest and you can still see like even back then they had this intention about you know how this can lead to a path of agi that stands for artificial general intelligence there is a podcast and audio tweet uh, there is an interview with lex friedman if you want to know more details about it you can go here and then see 
But this compression contest is motivated by the fact that being able to compress well is closely relating to acting intelligently. This is the same philosophy or principle that this author of Zip LM explained that why does it work? A language model is nothing but a distribution on the next token given the previous token. Anybody who has learned probability would know that this is very closer to what we say in conditional probability. Given that it rained yesterday, will it rain tomorrow? Or given that it rained yesterday, what is the probability of it raining tomorrow? Is like a simple question that everybody would have tried to solve when they studied probability. So the language model inherently is trying to do that. And there is also a general equivalence between probability distribution and codes. In compression, if you see it compresses and it tries to replace with replace you know, normal content with codes. And that's where the second point is what this makes it interesting. Information theory tells us that we can derive codes from probability distribution. And that's one of the reason why this entire concept of using a compression algorithm for a large language model where you can generate text works. But this paper is not about a large language model generating text. This paper is more about text classification. But what we can see from zip LM is that it can be also used for a large language model based text generation. So I took the code. I'll share this Google Collab notebook in the YouTube description for anybody to play with. So I took the zip LM code. So import zip LM and you can give a prompt. You can just give something like ABC and that goes inside this. And then it starts creating some kind of text based on that, like something random. You can also give some kind of training data for it to learn from that, for it to learn the patterns, the repeating characters, repeating words, positions, and all these things, typically what compression algorithms do. So I took a Paul Graham essay, which is typically used in the Lama index example. I took that and I gave here. So for example, you can give anything you want. You can say this is a great day and then I can use that model, create that model using that alphabet. And then now try to create the 100 text from the alphabet. So you can when when I try to create, you can see that it is going to create something at the end may not be completely relevant. But the idea here is that this is I mean, in 2023, I believe that this is this is an interesting concept to look at, especially at a time when we are looking at models that are not too big, smaller models with a niche use case with a narrow uh, intelligence solving. I think this is a great idea to use compression algorithms to generate a large language model or text. In this case, like you said, like we discussed before, it may not be like completely, you know, mind blowingly coherent output, but this has potential is what this code base is saying. And this is, I mean, this is one of the simplest code that you can see just like 41 lines of code. It tries to do a bunch of things. And um, as you can see, it works, it, it generates something. And uh, I don't know how many of you know this, but before all the large language models, like I myself have tried to create some text generation models using Markov chain and Markov chain also kind of used to use um, the state and transition to predict the next word based on the previous word. And this is all before the large language model era. So overall, the point here is that compression as a proxy for intelligence, something that is useful to explore further. And um, that's one of the reason I wanted to explore this zip LM and made this available in this video, where you can try zip LM and then try to see if you find something interesting. Um, zip LM also lets you get the probability of a sequence. For example, you can use this, you can have this alphabet and zip LM alphabet and uh, you can give the the sequence like this is my favorite string and you get like uh, the probability that would give you the probability of the sequence. So you can say something like this is my favorite string. Let's see what does it what do you get? A minus 91. So overall compression seems to be interesting once again. And if you have watched Silicon Valley, I think compression was the core of uh, Pied Piper and it uh, seems like in 2023, AGI might be possible <laughs> due to compression. I don't know, just a joke. So see you in another video. Let me know in the comments what you feel about this compression or the new direction of how LLMs could be explored based on compression algorithms. Take care. Happy prompting.